Hello again. In this and the next lecture we will study common techniques to reduce web latency. This lecture focuses on network-based techniques, that is techniques that primarily concern intermediary nodes such as middleboxes and proxy servers, while the next lecture is devoted to end node techniques, that is techniques that primarily concern web clients and servers. One way of categorizing techniques to reduce web latency is to differentiate between WAN optimization techniques, session layer optimization techniques, and protocol optimization techniques. The first two of these categories comprise network-based optimization techniques, while the last one comprises end node techniques and, as mentioned, will be considered in our next lecture. As the name suggests, the WAN optimization techniques aim to op maximize web performance across WANs and the session layer optimization techniques aim to optimize web performance at layer 5, the session layer of the OC stack. In practice, session layer optimization techniques translate to URL and DNS rewriting techniques and push and par techniques, of which the first two techniques prevail and are the ones considered in this lecture. The most common WAN optimization techniques are compression, which is very important to reduce the amount of bandwidth consumed during non-local web transfers, data deduplication, which could be seen as a derivative of data compression in that it also reduces the amount of data that needs to be transmitted, however it does so by eliminating the transmission of duplicate web objects. Caching, which basically entails storing reusable web responses in order to make subsequent requests faster. Prefetching or proactive caching, which carries out speculative retrievals of web resources into web cache in the anticipation of future web retrieval requests. And finally, load balancing, which reduces latency by distributing web requests across several web servers and thus effectively prevents a single server to become overloaded. HTTP compression enables web content to be compressed and thus leads to less data being transferred to the client. Particularly when HTTP is run over a secure connection, that is when HTTPS is used, HTTP compression leads to significantly reduced retrieval latency. As the slide suggests, HTTP compression may either take place on the server before the transmission to the client, so-called end-to-end compression, or on intermediate nodes, so-called hop-by-hop compression. In the first case, a web response is compressed once and left untouched until it reaches the client. In the second case, a web response might undergo several compressions, decompressions along its way from a server to a client. Particularly, connections between different intermediate nodes may employ different compression techniques. Examples of compression algorithms include GZIP, Deflate, and Brotli. In end-to-end uh, -end compression, the decision of which compression algorithm to use is made through what is called a proactive content negotiation. The browser lists in his accept encoding header which compression algorithms it support in precedence order. The server selects one of these algorithms and lets the browser know which one it has chosen by supplying a content encoding header. A similar negotiation process takes place in hop-by-hop -hop compression. However, in this case, the intermediate node transmitting the web request uses a TE header instead of an accept encoding header to tell the receiving intermediate node its compression algorithm support, and the receiving node co responds with a transfer encoding header that corresponds to the content encoding header. Data deduplication or redundancy elimination is a derivative of compression. In the same way as for compression, data deduplication is reducing the amount of data that needs to be transferred between client and server. However, data deduplication works by identifying and refraining from sending duplicate web objects. Data is analyzed to identify duplicate web objects and found duplicates are replaced with a reference that points to a stored single copy of a web object. On the basis of the granularity, data deduplication algorithms can be classified into three categories, whole file hashing, subfile hashing, and delta encoding. File and subfile hashing use a hashing algorithm to identify web objects. Commonly used algorithms are secure hash algorithm 1, SHA-1, and message digest algorithm 5, MD5. When a web object is processed by a hash algorithm, a hash is created that represents the object. A hash is a bit string, 
128 bits for MD5 and 160 bits for SHA-1. That represents the object being processed. If you process the same object through the hashing algorithm multiple times, the same hash is created each time. When a web object is transmitted, if the hash already exists in a hash index table, the object is deemed to be a duplicate and only its hash is transmitted. If the hash does not exist in the hash index table, the web object is transmitted and the hash index table is updated with the new hash. Data encoding works a bit different compared with file and subfile hashing. In this technique, the web server sends the difference or delta between the old and new instances of a web object rather than the entire new object. The figure on the slide illustrates one example of a delta encoding scheme, a class-based one. The main idea behind this scheme is to group web objects into classes and only communicate the delta between a web object and a base web object of a class. Caching is a technique that stores a copy of a web object and serves it back when requested. That is, when a copy of a web object is available in a web cache, the web object is retrieved from the web cache instead of being downloaded from the origin web server. Caching may take place on the client end, the server end, or on a proxy somewhere in between the clients and servers. Client end caches are located close to or inside the web browsers. The oldest and most common client end caching is browser request caching, which is part of the HTTP protocol standard and which enables the web server to control how often the browser requests new copies of files from the server. Other examples of client cache and caching are JavaScript and HTML5 caching, both of which provide for fine-grained caching of dynamic web contents. Server and caches are located very close to the origin web servers. Basically, server and caches mean that servers remember how web pages look like so that they don't have to generate them again. And an example of a server and caching system is memcached. Memcached enables a web server to store web objects in its RAM memory instead of on a secondary storage and is in that way many times able to cut latency by an order of magnitude. One way of optimizing caching performance is through cooperative caching, that is by sharing and or coordinating the cache state among multiple web proxy caches. Still, the effectiveness of cooperative caching depends to a large extent on inter-proxy communication distance, the size of the organization being served, and how well it is possible to load balance cache requests. Studies suggest that cooperative caching could benefit small and mid-sized organizations, however, less so larger organizations. Three classes of cooperative caching architectures can be identified. Hierarchical cooperative caching, distributed cooperative caching, and hybrid cooperative caching. A hierarchical cooperative caching architecture build web caches into a tree structure with the leaf nodes corresponding to the lowest caches closest to end users and the root nodes the highest caches. User requests travel from a given leaf node toward the root node until the requested web page is found. If the requested web page cannot be found even at the root level, the request is redirected to the web server containing the web page. A set of interconnected cooperative caches with no hierarchical structure builds up a distributed cooperative caching architecture and if the usefulness of a cached object depends on its distance from the local cache, we talk about a hybrid cooperative caching architecture. On the basis of what kind of information is cached, we can differentiate between content and function caches. In content caches, fragments of a dynamic web page are cached, and when a page is requested, the page is compiled together to as large extent as possible through the use of cached fragments. And only non-cacheable parts and expired fragments are fetched from the origin server. Function caches builds on the idea of caching the program that generates a dynamic web page together with any input parameters. A commercial function cache solution is found in IBM's WebSphere Edge server, which distributes application processing to the edge of the network. Prefetching or proactive caching aims to improve traditional passive caching by proactively and thus rather speculatively fetch web objects before they are actually requested. A web prefetching architecture comprises a prediction and a prefetching 
engine. The objective of the prediction engine is to predict which web objects will be requested in the near future and the prefetching engine pre-processes those web objects predicted by the prediction engine. Depending on whether a web client, proxy or server initiates the prefetching, we distinguish between client, proxy and server side prefetching. In an attempt to further improve the effectiveness of proxy side prefetching, so-called collaborative prefetching has been proposed, where the proxy side prefetching is coordinated with web servers. Another way of improving the effectiveness of prefetching is to carry out prefetching in several places along the path between the web client and the server, that is, at both the client and at a proxy server located at the network edge. Load balancing is the distribution of a workload across many web servers. It is typically used for balancing HTTP traffic over multiple servers acting together as a web front end. This means that the processing load can be shared across many servers rather than being limited to a single server, increasing performance during times of high activity. Moreover, load balancing increases the reliability of web applications. If one web server fails, the traffic can be programmatically distributed to other servers without any interruption of service. There are many ways to carry out load balancing and each of them has their advantages and disadvantages. Static load balancing does not take into account the previous states or behaviors of web servers while distributing the load, something may, uh, which makes static load balancing appropriate for systems with low variations in load. In addition to not taking into account the actual state of web servers, a major drawback of static load balancing is that web requests cannot be migrated between web servers during their execution. Examples of common static load balancing algorithms include round robin and its closest descendant, weighted round robin, opportunistic and IP hash. Using round robin, the load balancer simply goes down the list of servers sequentially and passes a web request to each one of them at a time. When the list of servers has reached its end, the load balancer simply restarts the process from the beginning. Although straightforward and easy to implement, it can pose some serious problems. For example, it does not take into account the fact that not all servers may have the same capacity. A suggested way around this is weighted round robin, which involves assigning a weight to each web server based on its capacity to handle web requests. In uh, opportunistic load balancing, the goal is to keep each web server busy and incoming web requests are dispatched to web servers in a random order without any consideration of the current workload. A consequence of this way opportunistic load balancing works is that bottlenecks might be created in spite uh, of some service actually being lightly loaded. In IP hash load balancing, the IP address of the web client is used to determine which web server is to receive the client's requests. In particular, a hash value is calculated on the basis of the client's IP address and port number and the hash value is used to determine which web server is to receive the client's request. Since a recovered broken IP connection is dispatched to the same web server, IP hash can be useful for stateful web transactions. In dynamic load balancing, the lightest server in the whole network or system is selected for incoming web requests. That is, in contrast to static load balancing algorithms, dynamic load balancing algorithms respond to the actual current system state in making load balancing decisions. Moreover, since the current state of the server system is used to make dynamic balancing decisions, ongoing web request processes are allowed to move from an overutilized to an underutilized web server dynamically. Examples of common dynamic load balancing algorithms include least connect, weighted least connect, and least connect time. In least connect, the number of connections against each web server is used to determine to which web server a web request is to be dispatched. Weighted least connect does to least connect what weighted round robin does to round robin. It introduces a weight component based on the respective web service capacity. Thus, a load balancer that implements the weighted least connect takes into consideration both the number of web clients currently being connected to a web server and the capacity of the web server. In least connect time, the web server with the fewest active connections and the lowest average response time is selected, something which ensures a speedy delivery of content.
The main objective of session layer optimization is to reduce the number of DNS lookups and TCP connections at the web client browser. And as mentioned in the beginning of this lecture, the two major session layer optimization techniques are URL and DNS rewriting. As the name suggests, URL rewriting entails rewriting the original URLs of objects on a web page so that later retrievals of that web page are directed to a caching proxy server instead of the origin web servers. An example of URL rewriting cache proxy server is EZ proxy, which changes the URLs in web pages so that requests for web pages are routed back to the proxy server. DNS rewriting entails rewriting DNS responses to point to a caching proxy server. When a web browser makes a request for a DNS domain name, the DNS responses are intercepted by a DNS rewriting proxy server. The DNS rewriting proxy server and the caching proxy server could be co-located or could be different entities on different machines. Let us end this lecture by summarizing its content. This lecture has considered network-based techniques to reduce web latency. We differentiated between two categories of techniques, WAN optimization and session layer optimization techniques. The WAN optimization techniques aim to maximize web performance across bands, and the session layer optimization techniques aim to optimize web performance at the session layer. Five WAN optimization techniques were discussed. HTTP compression, data deduplication, caching, prefetching, and load balancing, of which the first three techniques basically works by minimizing the amount of information that needs to be retrieved from origin web servers. The fourth technique, prefetching, tries to bring down latency by making qualified guesses of which web objects are next in line to be requested and proactively fetches these objects. Finally, the fifth technique, load balancing, tries to reduce the web response delay from a cluster of web servers by selecting the, in some respect, best web server. Two session layer optimization techniques were discussed, URL and DNS rewriting, both of which aims to direct web requests to proxy instead of origin web servers. As mentioned in the beginning, we will continue to study techniques to reduce web latency in our next lecture. However, this time focus on protocol optimization techniques that primarily works end to end without the involvement of intermediary nodes such as proxy servers. In the meantime, bye.